Hey everybody, welcome to Fit Tip Tuesday. Today I'm answering a subscriber's question about the vertical grain line on a pants pattern and how to reestablish it or fix it if it gets off kilter during the process of fitting your pattern. So I thought what could be fun to do today is talk about some of the adjustments that are pretty common in pants fitting and I'll show them to you and we'll see whether or not they actually affect the position of the grain line. So some adjustments will cause the grain line to be distorted or um, thrown off and other adjustments do not. So let's start with a couple adjustments that are really popular in pants fitting that do not affect the grain line. So I have a bunch of copies of my paper here, paper back leg, and I drew the vertical grain line on them. And basically the vertical grain line is in the center of the leg from the hem to the knee. And it's fairly centered as it comes up to the crotch. But as it goes through the crotch area, you can see that there's more paper or more fabric on the side seam side of the grain line. That is okay and that is perfectly normal. Um, another thing you want to notice is the top of the grain line is closer to the center back seam. Now some adjustments can actually cause that to get too close to the center back seam and I'll show you that when I show you some adjustments that affect the position of your grain line. If we were to scoop the crotch because that's a pretty popular um, adjustment. So first what I want to do is I just want to draw for you the original stitching line. Okay, so if we were to scoop now to make more sitting room or to make a deeper hole and lengthen the back rise if the rise is not long enough, what you would do is you would do something like this. You would start at the straight area you know, and then you would scoop, you know, and depending on what you're doing, a scoop can either join the original seam at the inseam or it can actually be lower and go off into the front. But you can see here, if this is my new stitching line, I would then draw my new edge a half an inch away, something like this and then I would cut that off. So if I just cut off the extra paper after scooping, okay, you can see this adjustment did not affect the grain line. So if you have to scoop or change the shape of your um, crotch curve and you're not slashing and spreading anything, scooping does not affect the grain line. The next thing I wanna talk about is if you wanted to add to your side seam. So let's say, you know, it was a little bit snug. So I could come out and I could add some through the hip area, let's say. Okay, so, you know, I've added all of this fabric here and I'll just color it in blue so you can see. Okay, if we add to the side seam, again, that is not gonna affect the shape of our vertical grain line. What if we had to lengthen the rise or lengthen the straight part of our crotch? Let's say we need to add or we need to um, cut our pattern and we need to spread it to make more vertical length or, or we need to shorten the vertical length. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna draw a guideline right here, let's say. Okay, now if I slash this, okay, and let's say we need to spread it to add more vertical length. So I'm just gonna use my, my sticky notes here. And let's just put some sticky note in there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue my grain line. 
up. And I'm going to mark the amount that I need to spread. So let's say we have to spread a half an inch. Okay, and then if I reposition the top of my leg right here, you can see that this adjustment of just equally raising, you know, the rise at the side and um, center back seam does not affect the grain line. Now, keep in mind, if you do this kind of adjustment, you will need to make a like adjustment to the front. So let me get a front here. Let's say in this example, we needed to um, add rise in the back, um, but we didn't need to add rise at the center front. So here's where you're going to get into a situation where the grain line is going to be affected. I'm going to have to do a wedge shape adjustment, meaning I'm going to pivot at my center front and technically I'd be pivoting over here at the stitching line because I have my you know my 3 8 inch seam allowance for my zipper and then I have a 3 8 inch seam allowance that's my you know center front and it does something like that but basically to make this pattern sew together I'm gonna have to cut through the leg to the seam and then I'm going to just create a hinge here and in this case because I'm cutting through um, both the zipper seam allowance and the the center front seam allowance if I do it here it'll just be a little less invasive to my edge by doing it on the actual seam line so watch what happens now if I spread this the half an inch look what happens Oops. Let me just put a paper here. So I'm going to spread this a half an inch so it agrees the side seams will sew together, but I want you to see what happened to my grain line here. All right, so you can see now my side seams are going to be the same length, but the top of my grain line is hooking off towards the center front. To reestablish that, you're going to reestablish it from below the adjustment. So that's the real steadfast rule here. If you change your grain line and you cause it to go off center, or if you're breaking the vertical, you always reestablish it below the adjustment. So here is my unaffected grain line. I'm going to use that to continue it up to the top. Okay, so now this is not my grain line anymore. This new blue is the top of my grain line. Wedge adjustments are what causes the grain line to bend because you're making an uneven adjustment between the side and center front or back. You know, and this can happen no matter where you do the adjustment. So for example, if I needed to, um, let's say on this, on our back here, I needed to lengthen my inseam. To lengthen your inseam, if you do it this way, where you draw across, and I'm just gonna do my seam allowance here. So if I cut through my inseam to spread it, I'm just going to make a pivot, okay, watch what happens. So you can see if I spread it, I'm also affecting the grain line. Alright, so again, I'm going to reestablish that by using the grain line below the adjustment. All right, so now I've reestablished my grain line. So sometimes after you've done a ton of things to your pattern, you get into a situation where the top of the grain line is extremely close to the stitching line at center back. See right there, there's 
there's almost no room between the grain line and the center back. That can throw the fit of the pattern off if your shape doesn't require you to have that sort of situation. What would be a reason to have your vertical grain line close to the center back? If you have prominent hips, belly, tummy, and you have a very defined waistline, that would be a situation where the grain line at the top could get closer to the center back. But if you've got a shape that's in proportion, meaning the waist is proportion in proportion to your hips and your belly and your tummy, you don't have any really dramatic curves going on. So to get this grain line to go back or to sort of restore the position of the grain line um, to its original position or close to its original position, we can do a wedge adjustment and we can overlap to fix that. So let me show you that as well. So I'm just going to draw a guideline right here. Let's use a different color. So I'm going to draw a line right here and then I'm going to slash it. And what I'm going to do is I'm creating a hinge over at my side seam. Okay. Instead of spreading now, because we know spreading this makes it actually worse, I'm going to overlap like this. Now the way I can tell what's happening with my grain line is I'm going to line my ruler up below the adjustment over here and I'm going to tip the top of the pattern down so I can see what's happening with my grain line. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in green now like this. When I think I've moved it enough and I've actually put it back to its original position you can see now it's agreeing with where it was before. Okay, I'm going to tape that into place. All right. All right, so you can see now I've reestablished the grain line, but I've also shortened the rise. So what you need to do is you need to sort of keep a track of how much you overlapped at the center back. So I'm just going to draw I'm just going to draw a little triangle here. This is all overlapped. Okay. So we need to add this amount back to the top. Okay, that's how we can fix this. And so let's say that this is three quarters of an inch. I am just going to extend this three quarters of an inch. And then I'm going to just bring this back down to the side. Okay, so now what we end up with is a grain line that's put back to its original position and we've also restored the original length of the center back seam. Okay, so that's how you can restore your grain line if it gets too close to the center back edge. So let me just recap here. If you're making like adjustments meaning you're cutting across your pattern and you're either raising or lowering, so spreading or overlapping it equally from um, your side seam and on your center front or center back, it's not going to affect the grain line. If you do a wedge shape adjustment where you slash pivot on the side edge and spread the center edge or pivot on the center edge and spread the side edge, that's what I call a wedge shape adjustment and that's where you'll need to re-establish your grain line. Okay, now let's take a look at some adjustments that you might need to make to your crotch points and inseam and side seam closer to the hem edge and I'll show you which one which ones require you to adjust your vertical grain line and which ones don't affect it. All right, so sometimes 
You need to extend your crotch points. That's a very popular adjustment. And you can do that two different ways. You can, you know, just simply extend the crotch point or you can slash and spread. And the interesting thing is if I draw myself a guideline, let's say right here, and then I'll make a pivot at my inseam right there. So if I slash this, creating a pivot, you can see that we are creating a wedge shape adjustment, but it's vertical. Okay, so let me just put some paper behind here. Okay, so when I pull this out, you can see I'm creating a wedge shape adjustment. Okay, but this wedge shape this wedge shape adjustment is vertical, so it does not affect the grain line. What if we were to extend or add to our inseams down at the hem? So like let's say we wanted to make a fuller um, pant along the inseam and we did this. Okay, so I'm adding all of this. This adjustment does affect the grain line because now our grain line is not in the center of the leg. So if you're just adding to either the inseam or the side seam area at the hem or at the knee, then you need to move the grain line over. So what you would do is you would now figure out you know, the new middle. So we're gonna measure from our new inseam to our original side seam here. And I'm just gonna make it so I can easily see that the new grain line is right here. And if you haven't made any horizontal wedge adjustments, you can simply use your original grain line as a guide to draw that up straight. Okay, so now our grain line has moved over a little bit. Let's say you're changing the style of the leg and you're making a wide leg or a narrow leg. So this could work in the same way here. Let me just get a new leg here. So let's say we wanted to extend our hem starting at the knee. So I'm gonna extend it, let's say a half an inch. We wanna make wide leg pants. If the adjustment you make to the inseam and the side seam are equal, the grain line is not affected. So when you're working below the crotch, you always wanna keep your eye on what's happening at knee level. Okay, so this, this this pant pattern just goes to the knee, but from the knee to the hem is where your grain line should be centered on the leg. So just keep an eye on if you're adding to both the side and inseam equally, does not affect the grain line, but if you're just adding to one side, you'll need to shift it over a little bit. Now the same thing works if you're tapering the leg. So let's say in this situation, instead of letting out the leg, we were tapering the leg. So I'm just gonna do this now. And then just to make it clear, I'm gonna cut it off. All right, so you can see that if you taper the leg equally on side to side, you're not changing your grain line either. Just to put a final point on the shifting of the grain line here, if you needed to take in your inseam, let's say, 
And let me just cut that off. Okay, now we would need to shift the grain line towards the side seam a little bit because it's not in the center. So let me just show you that really quickly. So now our grain line has moved here. Okay, and again, I can use my original grain line as a guide to make sure I'm drawing it parallel or perpendicular to the floor. Okay, so now our grain line would be here. So if you're making an uneven adjustment or an asymmetrical adjustment to the side seam or inseam, you'll need to shift the whole grain line over if that adjustment is down at the knee and hem. If you have any questions about, you know, establishing your grain line um, or fixing your grain line or wondering if it's even in the right spot, please post those questions below. You can also email me photos of your pattern and I can help you um, determine how to either reestablish it or I can confirm for you that it's okay. On Friday, I am going to show you how to hem a prom dress because it, prom season is right around the corner and I'm gonna be working on a friend's daughter's prom dress. So join me for Fab Fit Friday at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time and we will be doing the hem on a prom, prom gown. On Sunday, I am going to be making a satin embroidered bag for this garter that I made for a, another friend's daughter's wedding. And this is kind of a cool project because this was her her money bag, her, her the mom's money bag at her wedding. I took it apart and cut pieces out to make a casing for the elastic on the garter. And I'm going to show you how to embroider on satin to make an embroidered bag to store this garter belt on Sunday. So we'll be dealing with how to... Um, embroider on satin and then finish this little bag um, as a recycle or upcycle project. So if you have an embroidery machine and you'd like to join me for that, it's not live, but I will be uploading it at noon on Sunday. So that's my schedule for the week. I really appreciate you guys following along with me. If you have any fitting or sewing or embroidery questions, please always feel free to post those because I really like answering subscribers' questions in these tutorials. So I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you on Friday for FabFit Friday when we will be hemming a prom gown.